what are data structures the reason we are talking about this is because if you look at the internet everyone says if you want to get into this company or that company they will ask you a question based on data structures and algorithms so first of all why such a hype and what exactly data structures are so before we get into data structures let's talk about data see the entire software industry is based on data when you do a course on IT, which we call information technology, it's not about technology, it's about information. Because we work with information. So data is everything. So it doesn't matter what technology you learn, you basically learn or you work on it so that you can work with data. Example, think about programming languages. Why do we use programming languages? To process the data. Why do we use database? To store the data. Why do we use AI? to generate data or to understand data, right? I mean, just to bring it down, everything is data. Now then question arises, what is data structures? Now, if we talk about any programming language, we have something called primitive data types. If you want to store a number, we store that in integer. If you want to store a, a text, you store that in a string. If you want to store a character, you store that in a character. Of course, depending upon different languages, the term or the way you store it changes, but ultimately you have some types to it where you store the data. But what if you have a bunch of data and if you want to store them? It's not just about storing data. Anyone can do that. It's about how do you store data efficiently and you can also save some memory. The thing is, if you simply dump the data, you are expanding the memory and if you want to search something from the data, will be difficult. And that's why storing that data efficiently is very important. And that's where data structures comes into picture. So data structure is a way to organize and store data efficiently. Okay, so when you say efficiently, it means two things. First, in terms of performance and also in terms of the memory. Now, what about performance? Now, think about this. If you, if you talk about any software application which we use, it can be a normal calculator or it can be an application like Amazon website or any application which we use, a banking application as well. Now, what we do in that application is we use some features using which you can compute something, you can process something. Example, on calculator, you calculate on the banking website, you transfer money. So what you're doing is, you are basically building an application which will do some processing and the way you build an application is through algorithms now what are algorithms set of instructions let's say if i want to uh, add two numbers it's very simple you what you do is you say take two values from the user then perform the operation and give the value back to the user now those are the steps right those are instructions now what i have mentioned the instructions those are called pseudocode because we are not actually typing a code here we're not being specific to a language let's say c c plus plus java python javascript what we are simply saying is these are the steps you have to follow and that's your algorithm right but yes when you want to make it work you have to convert that into a code which will run on the computer right that's your actual software code and you can use any language doesn't matter right but the pseudo code will remain same now when it comes to processing of data for any task it's important for us to make it fast and also save memory now most of the companies are focusing on this concept of data, data structures is because they want to give a good experience to the user of course right if i'm using some application i want it to be fast now you will say okay to, to make the system faster you can increase the cpu speed you can increase the amount of ram you can do that but what if with the same amount of memory same amount of cpu power you can still make it more faster right and that can be done with the help of data structures now if you know how do you store that data efficiently in a proper structure and by doing that, you can make your application faster. Because in data structures, we have different type of data structures. Example, let's say if you have a bunch of data, you can store that in an array. But apart from array, we have other types as well. We have set, uh, we have linked list. So when to use what? It's not that this is best or that is best. It's, it's all about when to use what. And to understand when to use what, you have to first understand what those things are right? How do you decide that this time you have to use array, this time you have to use set? And that's where understanding these concepts are very important. Now, these are not the only options we have. We have tree, we have graph, when to use them. So when you understand those concepts, then we can think about, okay, for this situation, we will use this. And this is why companies are preferring candidates who knows DSA. It will help them in multiple ways. First, it helps them to reduce the cost is because every computation, see, uh, I know you're, you're going to be thinking, 
uh, most of the application which we use are free, right? Think about Instagram. Now, when we use Instagram, of course, we are not paying for it, but then companies are paying for it, right? So the meta is paying for, for you to use Instagram. So because those computations will be happening somewhere, maybe meta is using some cloud service, let's say Amazon is in this case. So meta is basically paying to Amazon for every computation which you do, okay? Of course, they earn from ads, but then they are paying for it. So what they will do is they will try to optimize it. They will say, okay, if one query takes, let's say $1 or maybe half a dollar, can we just reduce it more? Can we just make it 10 cents? So that's the thing they are trying to do. And the way you can do that is by making sure you use a proper algorithm with a proper data structure. So why companies are doing it? To reduce the, reduce the cost. Second, to give a better customer experience so that it will run faster. And if I search something, it should be faster for me as well, so as a customer. Next, when companies want to hire people, they have so many candidates, right? How will they filter those candidates? Now, data structures algorithm becomes one of the way to filter the candidates. Because if you know data structures, that means you have worked a lot on that particular language and you understand how, how a particular system works. On the other hand, data structures are not the only thing you need to know. If you want to be a good developer, if you want to get hired, there are multiple things needed. Example, you need to have a good hold on a particular language, a particular technology. You should have worked on few projects, understanding the entire ecosystem, not just one language. Uh, working with databases, working with networking, but then DSA becomes one of the important thing there. So just to summarize, what are data structures? So data structures is basically a way to organize and store your data in the efficient way. And there are multiple data structures option available there. And you will understand that in the upcoming sessions we're going to talk about. In the upcoming videos, you will, we will talk about what are the types of data structures we have, how to use them, when to use what, and what are the algorithms available there. So I hope you got some idea regarding data structures. So of course, entire series is important to understand that properly. So I hope you're excited. See you in the next video.